Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Pierre Manuele Canepa. I'm an assistant professor at the National University of Singapore, and I'm also part of the Singapore MIT Alliance uh, for Research and Technology here. Today, I'm excited to be here at Prime virtually and uh, to provide uh, this contributed talk on the electrochemical stability and ionic transport of materials that might be form at the electrolyte electrode interface or be, might, might be envisioned as coating materials in magnesium batteries. But why magnesium batteries? Well, on the left hand side, here you have a typical architecture of a lithium batteries, which mounts a graphitic anode and an oxide cathode, either this being LCO, NMC, or higher energy dense um, cathodes. And those two electrode materials sandwich an electrolyte, typically PF6, in a, um, a, a solvent of uh, mixture of DMC and EMC. On the right hand side, you have the equivalent in volume of the magnesium batteries. Uh, this, uh, these batteries utilize a magnesium metal anode, which is almost five times in, in uh, five folds in uh, terms of energy density compared to its equivalent graphite on the left hand side. You have a, an intercalation cathode, and the fact that in this intercalation cathode, you are shuttling uh, in and out magnesium ion, transporting two electrons at the times, potentially would uh, give you twice the energy density. This, however, is not true. Uh, the prototypes of magnesium battery that is available at the moment still utilize the metal anodes, so energy dense metal anode, but it loses significantly in terms of gravimetric capacity and uh, volumetric capacity as well at the cathode side. This is because of two reasons. One, we are using a sulfide-based electrode, the Chevrel, uh, Chevrel phase, which operates around the 1.1 volt versus magnesium. This is of open circuit voltage. And second of all, this material is rather heavy due to molybdenum, which uh, lower the gravimetric capacity. However, this battery works, and electrolyte uh, that uh, are, um, operates uh, enable the plating and stripping of magnesium at the metal anode. However, if one would like to um, introduce oxide-based cathode, which of course will increase significantly the energy density of these magnesium batteries, well, one would uh, revisit the formulation of electrolyte, which at the moment are rather small in terms of uh, electrolyte stability windows. So there are pretty much two ways to accommodate uh, this uh, challenge. One, of course, is to formulate the liquid electrolytes that are um, able to simultaneously tolerate the reducing chemistry of the, at the anode material and the oxidative chemistry at the cathode, high voltage cathode material. Or as a second challenge, one can reverse the engineer this problem and say, can we find coating material that can stabilize uh, uh, our uh, high voltage cathode particle, potentially an oxide or a magnesium metal anode interface. So the outcome of this study will be two folds. But how do we do that? We apply computational material science, in particular de density functional theory. Here yeah, we're using uh, operating in the uh, generalized gradient approximation, in particular, we're using the uh, Purdue Burke Henners of functional. But uh, we use uh, computational material science, in particular DFT, to access free energies, free energies which are uh, casted inside this formula at the bottom in a, po a special thermodynamic potential called gram potential, um, gram potential. So G are the computed energy uh, from uh, stemming from DFT. And then you have this variable, which is uh, mu mg, the chemical potential of magnesium. That the chemical potential of magnesium is reminiscent of the voltage at which the material that we are trying to study uh, sits at. So we apply these strategies to identify the stability windows of this electrolyte and as a function of magnesium chemical potential, hence we, have, uh, we can set the voltage uh, with respect to specific uh, um, electrochemical condition rather the material being a low voltage ends against the anode material or being at high voltage, let's say 3.5 or 4, 4 volts, which means against a cathode material, so oxidative environment. 
The chemistry that we have been uh, look at are those of binary, uh, ternaries, and quaternaries. Uh, but importantly, those are only experimentally reported chemistry. So we don't use here uh, uh, computational material science to, to find a new uh, composition. We are happy to use experimentally reported material. The second aspect that has been introduced in uh, the development of these uh, studies is that none of the material studies here, and as you can see from the periodic table above, includes open D-shell or F-shell uh, transition metal oxide. The chemistry ends that we have uh, investigated includes the halogens, the charcogens, so group 8, uh, the picogens, tetrals, and triols, uh, uh, but also hydrides, and of course the active ion is magnesium. So let's look at the uh, stability windows uh, for um, binary compounds uh, that have been studied in the, into this material. In this graph I'm showing you on the x-axis the voltage versus magnesium. So zero on this axis represents magnesium metal and more positive value, say 4.5, represents uh, uh, the open circuit voltage of a um, cathode material. For example, here I'm showing you magnesium chromate, which is a potential high voltage cathode. The width of this bar represents the stability windows and the stability windows is also shown uh, as the numerical value next to each bar. So unsurprisingly here I'm showing you the, the ver uh, variability of the stability windows as function of a halogen ion in a halide and unsurprisingly you can see that uh, the stability windows decrease, uh, decreases as you move down from fluorine to iodine. So as I move down in the uh, group of a specific chemistry, in this case halides, my uh, stability windows decreases. The same pattern is also found in charcogenides, so oxide with oxide being uh, the highest stability windows, and uh, so on and so forth, going in terms of uh, sulfur selenium and tellurium. And the same, uh, um, with some exception, the same trend applies also to picogens, tetral, and other materials. Uh, with the surprise, the magnesium hydride is stable against it. magnesium. So in summary, uh, most of these materials are always stable against uh, magnesium metal. If they are not, they decompose in their elemental uh, components. So, uh, for example, uh, in the case of MgP4, it will have the composition in magnesium metal and phosphorus. And uh, again, the stability windows of this binary tends to uh, decrease as one move down in the period in the group of a specific period. Now uh, the situation becomes a little bit more complicated when you look at ternary and quaternary oxide and uh, the first thing again here I'm showing you the voltage scale where zero represents magnesium metal. The first things that you see is n none of the bar shown here for a number of chemistry uh, really touches the zero line. This means that none of this compound is ever stable against magnesium metal. And as a result, this compound tend to decompose often into the binary uh, from which they form off. And you guess for oxide, a common binary is magnesium oxide. And magnesium oxide in batteries, uh, magnesium batteries, is not a good compound to have around because it virtually block uh, anything that happens at the um, any electrochemistry that might happens at the anode material. Interestingly, though, some of this uh, chemistry, ternary and quaternary chemistry, uh, touches uh, uh, rather high voltages on the uh, oxidative side. So the anodic stability windows of some of this material remains rather good. For example, we are looking at uh, MgP411, MgS207, uh, and uh, magnesium aluminate and magnesium phosphate. And remarkably, some of these oxide, for example, magnesium titanium phosphate, uh, they have a rather uh, large uh, stability windows. Of course, we also have that data for non-oxide, uh, ternaries and quaternaries, but somehow they follow the same trends as uh, this one shown here. But how do we rationalize this uh, um, evidence that I just showed you a few minutes ago? 
So from the oxidative stability windows point of view, which also maps into what is called the anodic stability windows, and uh, whereby uh, you're, we are probing the process of extracting electron from the cathode side, from the material to the cathode side, so the uh, cathode side tends to oxidize the material, is rather easy to understand the oxidative stability is connected directly to the polling electronegativity. And so here I can show you that uh, the poly electronegativity here shown as chi uh, increases, uh, decreases as you move uh, along the period, down in the period from oxygen to sulfur to selenium to tellurium. As per the reductive stability, i.e. the cathodic uh, stability, meaning uh, the ability of a certain material nearby a uh, reducing agent such as magnesium metal anode to resist the injection of electrons, uh, we can clearly say that for ternary materials, uh, meaning that materials that contains a cat an additional cations to magnesium, for example a phosphate, right, the proxy uh, for uh, uh, the, the electronegativity or polling electronegativity is inversely related to, uh, um, to, to the reducing stabilities, the reductive stabilities, I apologize. So for a, chlor a chlorine containing compounds or a sulfur containing compounds such as sulfate of a phosphor for us containing compounds, one effectively look at the, uh, the uh, electrochemical uh, electronegativity, polling electronegativity of this ion. And one can envision, in fact, uh, uh, magnesium metal going to reduce uh, phosphorus from a phosphorus 5 plus to a phosphorus 3 plus. As a final aspect, more intricate, one should also look when uh, one is uh, trying to understand the reductive stability of the cathodic stability uh, in the same uh, class of compounds, meaning that they're magnesium containing and they also contain a, a, a second cation they should also look at the chemistry of the anion. So an oxide tends to decompose much more easily uh, than a sulfide-based ternary because the formation energy to form magnesium oxide is rather more favorable than magnesium sulfide. So just by simply looking at the formation energy um, or the aptitude to form uh, the binary connected to the certain ternary or quaternaries, one can have a sense uh, how uh, the uh, st reductive stability will behave of these compounds. Okay, we have touched base on the thermo electrochemical stability of these compounds, but uh, a much more important is the transport of this ion in these compounds. The problem here is uh, colossal in the sense that uh, lithium and magnesium have a similar uh, atomic radii, but however they differ significantly in charge. Lithium is plus one and magnesium is two plus. So the, the colossal problem relates to the fact that you have to move this two plus charge in a, 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 in a network of an ion and uh, the a, a Coulombic interaction between this ion uh, is increased at least twofold. So in this uh, part of the talk I will elucidate uh, uh, how we can understand uh, uh, and uh, benchmark and chart the mobility of some of this material that could potentially be coating materials or the composition products of salts at the electrode electrolyte interface. And so here the model, uh, the phenomenological model that we are using is rather simple. Three variables are needed, time, discharge time, which is connected to the length uh, the needs the magnesium or whatever ion you're considering need to traverse and this is the length the the cross section really of the coating material or the deposition material that is formed at the electrolyte electrode interface and a third variable is temperature temperature that uh, permeates into this Arrhenius equation now if we uh, do some uh, uh, manipulation of this mathematics using a back of the envelope calculation you can estimate what is the maximum accessible migration barrier that a certain material can um, tolerate. And we can probe this magnesium barrier using a, a um, nugget elastic band here in the specific case, but alternatively uh, other people have used uh, molecular dynamics. So here in this graph I'm plotting on the x-axis the migration barrier 
for a certain number of compounds, but I wanted to point your attention to two particular boundary conditions that we set. So you have the red boundary condition, red line, which is a, for a rather thin um, coating material, discharging at a, a rather slow uh, C rate, C over 2. Then you have the blue line on the right, which is about 600 milli electron volt, and this is for a more um, optimistic case where you have a rather thick coating, 50 nanometer, and a super fast discharge time. So what you can see is that for those materials that are stable against the magnesium metal anodes, which are shown here uh, with the green bars, uh, the chloride and the halides uh, behaves rather well. The oxide, unsurprisingly, uh, behaves poorly, and we know exactly that the, the transporting magnesium in magnesium oxide is not happening, at least uh, at room temperature. And there are other exceptions, such as magnesium hydride, magnesium borohydride, that should be looked into. Interestingly, the magnesium chloride, bromide, and iodide are major components in what are the available electrolytes in magnesium battery. For example, this MAC electrolyte proposed by Pellion Technology together with Oron Harbach uh, relies entirely on the deposition of magnesium chloride, formation and dissolution of magnesium chloride in ethereal solution. And this uh, uh, bring us to say that, uh, yes, indeed, the transport of magnesium on this halide must be damn good if you, uh, if you envision that this uh, salt is constantly formed and destroyed. Some of this material has also, have, uh, also have a decent bang up, which uh, for an hypothetical uh, prediction of electronic conductivity uh, ensures that these materials are, are, are rather stable in that sense and they not conduct electron. At the cathode side, again, same story on the x-axis, and uh, these are materials that are stable uh, towards cathode, uh, energy-dense cathode, um, so high-voltage cathode that operates at a voltage higher than 3 volts versus magnesium. You can see uh, that the situation is rather grimmer. Uh, only two materials, magnesium phosphate and magnesium aluminate, have a rather decent um, uh, yeah, a ra rather decent uh, magnesium ion transport. And in particular, magnesium phosphate, again, in terms of uh, understanding the effect of electronic conductivity, has an enormous bang up that ensures that this material will be also uh, blocking electrons while it's conducting very well uh, magnesium ions. So, in summary, I show you the phase diagram and the migration barrier of more than 100 compounds uh, that can be used uh, as potential coating materials, not all of them, a subset, or can be envisioned as a decomposition product uh, of existing electrolyte at the electrode electrolyte interface. We found a number of candidates. These include the halides, magnesium chloride, bromide, iodide, hydrides, and magnesium uh, borohydride which are stable against the anode. Another rule of thumb that comes out from our analysis is that if your compound contains a sacrificial non-magnesium cation, for example, phosphorus or chlorine, etc., this might be helpful to prevent uh, further ox uh, reduction by uh, the anode. And at the cathode side, two uh, in, uh, materials such as magnesium aluminate and magnesium phosphate comes out as possible potential coating material that should be studied and implemented perhaps in the new generation of electrolyte. With that, I wanted to advertise our recent work uh, in collaboration with Alexandre Pongrouche and Johan uh, at the, uh, Barcelona, where we utilize this technique to investigate uh, the possibility of reversing plate calcium at the calcium electrode and from a liquid electrolyte. And finally, I would like to acknowledge my sponsor, the National Research Foundation, the Ministry of uh, Singapore, uh, Ministry for Education, and US Smart, and my um, amazing colleague, uh, Sai and, and Tina Chan Udad, in this uh, effort. Thank you very much uh, for your attention, and I would be happy to answer any question.